Well, hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my bench. Now, today we've got a Thunderbird BD20. It looks like a DC powered electric fence energizer. Okay, so we're going to have to find out how to get this one apart. Don't know what's wrong with it. I wasn't told what's wrong with it, but there, there it is. Okay, so obviously it runs on uh, 12 volts uh, or 4D cells. Okay, so it's 12 or 6. So, yeah, a bit strange. But anyway, there's the bottom of him. Um, obviously, and three position switch there, on off switch, whatever. There's no batteries in this, it's very light. And as I said, no idea what's wrong with it, but let's open him up, have a look. If you've got one of these, this might be the video for you. You might, uh, well, get a, a couple of tips out of <laughs> what I'm doing with them, but, um, yeah, some of these can't be fixed, but we normally have a pretty good strike rate, okay? So let's have a look inside him. Okay, now... Yeah. To get him off something something slides ah there we go something slides and there we go so that's the back off for the battery compartment okay two screws here two here and she comes apart let's have a look and once we have a look and see if there's anything obvious, we might be a bit further ahead. If we can't see anything obvious, we'll hook up my power supply to it and try and make something obvious. Lots of these things around lately. Electric fence energizers. Uh, and I don't know why, but there's not many people fix these things. And they are worth a little bit of money. They are certainly worth fixing rather than throwing away. All right. Now, let's see here. This comes off somehow. Okay. We lift up here somehow. There we go. Right. And there we are. This is a, uh, a different style. Nice little transformer there, high voltage transformer. Um, we'd have our SCR there. A uh, bit of, uh, that's probably our power supply, a uh, buck converter, probably a step up there from maybe 6 volts of the battery to 12 volts to run the unit, not real sure. Um, the cap would, which would be yeah, across, across the line. It's not a terribly, terribly strong electric fence, this one. But, um, yeah. Here we go. I'll give you a look and you can sort of have a look at what's inside it to start with. Okay, so we've got a processor chip there by the look of it. Can't quite read him, but you might be able to pick that up. I can't from where I'm sitting. Um, our SCR, yeah, once again, can't quite get what he is, but uh, a little surface mount jobby. So this unit doesn't look to be that old, actually. Hmm. Righto. So I'm guessing the go is now. Let's, uh, this is our battery terminals here. 
to our battery down the bottom. Let's, uh, no, we won't unplug them. We can't unplug them. Uh, we, we might. We'll unplug these. Okay. No. Okay. We'll put power on it elsewhere. And um, we, we do have a jack that goes in here, which is, uh, well, I don't know whether that's 6 or 12. It says runs on either. So probably 12 because it did say it runs on 4D cells or 12 volts. Okay, so obviously um, one, one lot here would go through the buck converter, the other one doesn't. Anyway, um, get the power supply going and see if we can get it to, uh, to do anything. I might just, just be able to pull them up just enough to get some alligator clips on the back there. Okay, 12 volts. We'll limit it to one amp. That should be ample for this thing. Okay, got the power supply up. We're using the left-hand side today. Six volts, and I've set it at uh, one amp. We'll try and get in here somewhere. Let's see here. This is going to be very, very tricky to get onto. Okay. And there's an LED flashing there. Hang on a minute. We're not drawing very much current, but have we got any sort of a spark? And we have. Not a lot. Oh, there's enough there. Okay, now I don't know whether you guys can see the spark, but um, yeah, there is enough there. What is not working with this? Is it a battery connection? The battery connections appear to be fine. We put that in there. We're looking about 35 milliamps when it fires. 37, 40, 39, 50. Bit erratic, really. Um, hmm. um, we'll take the board out. We'll take our board out, which is only uh, these two bolts and that one screw holds it in. And we'll just check everything. We'll check our, well, whatever that switch does. Oh, high and low and off. Okay, that was on, uh, okay, that was on low. So we'll switch it to high, but first of all, We'll take the board out. There may be something sinister under the board, but you never know. So I'll, I'll check, him, check him out under here. All right, so... Normally these don't hold any voltage in them. Um, well, I've 
I've never had the case where they do. But I um, like a any of these things. I like checking out absolutely everything. As I've said before, don't need it going back and causing problems again. We, the jack could be crook. Uh, could be, yeah, could be anything. There we go. We just gotta try and get that bolt out. And it does not want to come out. Okay. Nice and clean. Clean underneath. DC socket is uh, looking pretty good. It is a bit dirty on the outside. We'll give this a spray. We'll also check it via the socket. So if it's uh, 12 volt, it doesn't say that it's 12 volt. But on the switch, it does say high, off, low. Okay. So we'll get these off. And then we can run this thing a little bit easier on the bench. On the bench. There we go. Right. Transformer is uh, well soldered in. Just looking at what could be wrong everything looks pretty good um, these have been pop riveted but um, before this goes out I also yeah, there's a little bit of solder there and there I'll re-solder these to make sure they're proper contact clean the DC plug we'll uh, grab a DC plug in a minute and check our input from the battery which will be 12 volts okay so everything else everything looks pretty good all right we'll get a dc plug clean this out I'll also put some spray in the um, on-off switch because that can also be a point of failure. Just the service for this one.
Well, there, guys. Well, we've got um, power supply on 12 volts. Well, plug that fella in. Now he's up for high. And obviously the centre of this one is the yellow. Our power supply is turned on at the moment. So when I connect this red lead, that should start. And there he goes. He's pulsing. I don't know whether you guys can see that. But I'm not touching that just at the moment. <laughs> Okay, so I think you can see it pulsing. Anyway, it's that bloke there, and you can see it's pulsing. Okay, let's see. We've got the ground on this side. Let's see what sort of an arc we've got, and that's that's pretty healthy. Now, I do have a meter for this, but we, we don't. Uh, we're not using it at the moment. This is just a go, no go test. Okay, so that's a healthy spark. No worries there. Let's draw in, uh, and if we short that out, um, let's draw in 72 milliamps, and yeah, quite a healthy spark. We're looking at, yeah, that, that's good. Okay, so. That's it for this one. Everything is working. He's working off DC. He's, we're going to clean the battery terminals now, which will be just the bottom of the battery terminals. They're, they look fine. The other end is perfect. So this is a good boy. He hasn't left the batteries in at any stage. So we'll give them a clean up and we'll get it together. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Righto, so we know this will now run on batteries, washer there, batteries or um, our DC plug because we know the DC works and this does high and low and off. So that's it, we're going to put it together. And I think that's working pretty damn well by the sound of that. Well, hey guys, that's it for this one. He's working good. A Thunderbird BD20 fence energizer. Powers up to two kilometers. There now. Okay, that's it for the bench today. So I hope you enjoyed that. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, if you want to keep following me with all sorts of stuff like this, hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified when the next one comes up that I do. Okay, guys, until next time, bye for now.